بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم our first sum is over positive integer n of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n cubed times the hyperbolic cosecant of pi n x plus x squared times the hyperbolic cosecant of pi n over x x is a positive real number we can make use of this result which was proved in a previous video using the Poisson summation formula we have eta is a real number between 0 and pi b is a non-zero real number the sum over positive integer m of cosine eta m over m squared plus p squared is equal to minus 1 over 2 p squared plus pi over 2 the hyperbolic cosine of b times pi minus eta divided by b times the hyperbolic sine of b times pi set eta equal to pi cosine eta m becomes cosine by m which is minus 1 to the power m so we get the summation in the numerator of this ratio we have the hyperbolic cosine of zero which is one divided by b times the hyperbolic sine so we have pi over 2b the hyperbolic cosecant of p pi minus 1 over 2p squared we now use this expression twice we set b equal to nx we also set b equal to n over x from here we get that the hyperbolic cosecant of pi nx is equal to 2nx over pi summation m from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the m over n squared plus n squared x squared plus 1 over pi n x. From this line, we get that the hyperbolic cosecant of pi n over x is equal to 2n over pi x summation m from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the m x squared over n squared x squared plus n squared plus x over pi n. Multiply both sides by x squared. So here we get 2n x over pi and this x becomes x cubed. We can add these two expressions and use the result in place of this bracket here. When we add these two parts, we get x cubed plus 1 over x times 1 over pi n. This is multiplied by minus 1 to the n plus 1 divided by n cubed. So we get 1 over pi times x cubed plus 1 over x times the sum over positive integer n of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n to the power 4. When we add these two parts, we get a double sum. We can take 2x over pi as a common factor. We have minus 1 to the power n plus 1. We also have minus 1 to the power m. We can write down this product as minus 1 to the power m plus n plus 2 and put a minus sign here. We effectively have two double sums. In this part, rename n as m and m as n. Note that both summation indices take positive integer values. Assume that it is valid to interchange the order of summation. When we add, we get downstairs n squared, m squared, m squared plus n squared x squared. Upstairs, we get m squared plus n squared. Let's not forget this x squared. This goes away with that. We are left with 1 over n squared n squared. If we go back here, this summation is zeta of 4 times 1 minus 2 over 16. Zeta of 4 is pi to the power 4 divided by 90. This double sum can be written as the square of the single sum n from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power n plus 1 divided by n squared. And this summation is zeta of 2 times 1 minus 2 over 4. Simplifying, we get that the sum of interest is pi cubed over 720 times 7x cubed minus 10x plus 7 over x. The second sum is a double sum over non-negative integers k and m. 2k choose k times 2m choose m times 8 to the power minus k minus m divided by the cube of k plus m plus 4. Let's call this sum omega. When the real part of a is strictly positive, we can write 1 over a to the power x as 1 over gamma of x integral t from 0 to infinity t to the x minus 1 a to the minus a t. We use this result to write 1 over k plus m plus 4 cubed as 1 over gamma of 3, which is 2 factorial, which is 2 integral t from 0 to infinity t squared e to the minus t times k plus m plus 4. Let's interchange the order of integration and summation. We have a sum m from 0 to infinity. 2m choose m, 8 to the minus m. From here, we have e to the minus t to the power m. The Taylor series of 1 over the square root of 1 minus 4z is summation k from 0 to infinity. 2k choose kz to the n, and the magnitude of z is less than 1 over 4. Based on this result, this summation is 1 over the square root of 1 minus 4, e to the minus t divided by 8. If we go back to the double sum, there is another sum with respect to k, which gives the exact same result. So omega is one half integral over positive t of t squared e to the minus 4t. This 4 is that one. Then we have the square of this result, which is 1 over 
1 minus 4 e to the minus t over 8. 1 over 1 minus 1 half e to the minus t can be written as summation j from 0 to infinity. 1 over 2 e to the minus t all to the power j. We integrate term by term. We have this integral t from 0 to infinity t squared e to the minus t times j plus 4. This is gamma of 3 divided by j plus 4 cubed. Gamma of 3 divided by 2, that's 1. We are left with summation over non-negative integer j of 1 half to the power j divided by the cube of j plus 4. Change the summation index j to j minus 4. We get summation j from 4 to infinity, 1 half to the power j minus 4 divided by j cubed. Recall that the trilogarithm of z is equal to summation j from 1 to infinity, z to the power j divided by j cubed. So this summation here is 1 half to the power minus 4, that's 16. Then we have the trilogarithm of 1 half. Because this summation starts from 4, we need to subtract from the trilogarithm the terms corresponding to j equal 1, 2, and 3. Our double sum of interest is this result here. This is what we get when we use the value of the trilogarithm of 1 half.